Hi, this is Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to take a journey into the worst thing that can happen. Your pens, they suddenly disappear and you've got to restart your collection. What I'm going to do is look at the five pens that should that happen, they're the ones that I would rebuy. So why not join me down on the mat? Let's explore these five pens. We're just going to take a quick look at each of them. We'll do a writing sample. And I'll give you the reasons why I think that's a pen that I would rebuy should a disaster strike. So here we are down on the mat. With the pens that we're going to look at, what I'm going to do is fetch them out in the order of the cost. So it'll be the cheapest one first, going all the way up to the most expensive pen. So the first of the five that I would rebuy is this. This is the Moonman M800. This particular one is the purple pattern. Now there are a number of other colors and I've got them all. I've got green, blue, and amber. I love these pens, I really do. The, the coloring, the pattern, I'm just gonna slowly turn this one around. Just look at that, it's really nice. These pens are based on the Leonardo Memento Zero. Very, very similar to that. When I first saw these pens, wow, I was just grabbed by them. I love the shape. I love the size. I love the resin. I love everything about them. Clear them ones off. We'll take a look very quickly at the nib here. So the nib on these, there's two choices. You can either have a Moonman nib, which is what I've got on the green and the blue pens, or you can have a Bok nib, which is what I've got on this purple one and also on the amber. I will be honest, I do prefer the Bok nib, but you have to pay extra to get that Bok nib. It's still quite nice. Now, one of the downsides with this pen is it only comes in a fine nib. And that's a shame because I'm moving towards preferring the broad nibs, maybe medium at a stretch. This is a cartridge converter, here we go. Just so you can see that, the cartridge converter does come with the pen. Let's pop that back together and we'll take a quick look at the ink that we're going to be using in this. So for this one, I'm using Diamine Mondobo's hat. I've written on here what I thought it was when I first got the ink, which was Mondobo's hat, it's not. It's Mondobo's, so I got my D's and my B's mixed up. This though, it's a really nice deep purple color. There's no sheen really, not a lot in the way of shading either, but it's still, it's a nice purple ink to go with this pen, which is more of the ready side of purple, but it's still a nice ink when you see it writing. So let's do our writing sample. So pen number one is a Moonman M800. As I say, this has got the Bok Fine nib. The Moonman nib, it's okay. It writes really nicely. I say, personal preference, I prefer the Bok. The ink, Diamine. Mon, make sure I get this right. Bodo's hat. Let's do our drying times. Immediate. 10 seconds, 30 seconds, almost dry at 30 seconds, finally one minute. There, after a minute, that's nice and dry. Next writing test, I'm going to move the mic down to the paper so you can hear the pen write. So it's a nice writer. There's definitely feedback there. You can definitely hear that nib on the paper. You can feel it as you're writing. It's smoother than the Moonman nib, but as I say, a little bit of work on the Moonman nib very quickly makes them roughly the same. You have to pay extra for the Bok nib. And sometimes I question whether it's worth it, but that's down to personal choice. If we take a look at the writing, 
you can see there's not a lot of line variation there's not a lot of shading it works well i love the colors i love the feel of the pen it's so nice and comfy just take that off again you know my fingers just sit there really nicely near the bottom there of the section there's no lip to dig in the pen unposted it's just about nice for me to hold can you post it you can doesn't seem to make it any heavier on the back so again if you're happy to use your pen posted i don't see a problem with this one so this is pen number one that i would be rebuying again the moon man m800 and i forgot to add on here this pen ranges in price from 35 dollars through to 66 dollars these are what i paid on aliexpress You've got to be careful with AliExpress. There's a lot of different prices for the same pen. Pen number two is from Pen BBS. So another Chinese pen. This is the Pen BBS 487. Now this is a pen that was on and off my list all week because I love it. The pattern is called Cordyrite. Let me just slowly twist it here. I don't know how much this comes up on the camera. So you've got swirls of blues, of browns, of whites. But then you've also got that transparency so you can see the ink there and just see that movement up and down now why i've hummed and had with this pen is i've had major issues with the filling mechanism which is here you can see the silver disc this pen is a magnetic filler which means you take off the cap the cap attaches there and then you're meant to be able to drag it down and then drag it back up it doesn't work no matter what i've done i cannot get that to move when i first got the pen i did get it out because i ended up using some really thin plies and i managed to get up there and get hold of it and pull it down since then it's not budged but i've got to be honest that doesn't bother me because all i do to fill this is i take off the section here that screws off from the rest of the body and i eyedropper it which, as you can see, gives me a really nice fill. Really nice pen. Apart from that filling mechanism, that's the only thing which had me humming and hiring about it. But I thought, no, I love writing with this pen. It's another pen I think is really nice and comfy. I love the looks of it. It's simple, but it's got that little bit of interest to it. The ink that I've got in here at the moment is by Diamine, and it's Diamine Oxford Blue. Really nice, deep, deep dark blue color now i don't see on here i have seen on some sites that there's a bit of red sheen to this i don't get that but that could just be me this is only the second ink i've had in this pen prior to putting this diamine oxford blue in it the only ink that ever went into there was colorverse supernova and i've got to be honest that's still my favorite ink to put in this pen the diamine oxford blue is nice much prefer the colorverse i've now got another sample of that colorverse ready to go but you can see how much ink is in here this normally lasts me a good six to eight weeks on one fill so the pen we've got here is a pen bbs 487 again it only comes in that fine nib i'd love to get this into a broad nib i may end up having to buy one it's a number six nib so i can just replace it but then that adds extra cost to it because you've got to pay 15 to 20 dollars to get the nib wait for it to arrive and then change it yourself how much did this cost well this was 54 australian dollars again from aliexpress so make sure if you're looking for it that you really spend the time to find the cheapest one the ink diamine oxford blue drying times immediate a lot wetter there isn't it 10 seconds 30 seconds then finally one minute after a minute still a little bit wet on the edge there but more or less dry going to move the mic
So another nice writer. Got this lovely dark blue that's coming from that Oxford blue ink. I really do like this. My wife, she doesn't like it. She says it's too dark. Personally, I think this is a really nice dark colour. It doesn't have the character though that I get from the Colourverse Supernova in this pen. This seems a lot flatter than what I would like, but it's worth trying with different inks. It's worth experimenting with those different shades, different colours and different manufacturers. I enjoy writing this pen. Again, let's show you there. It's, it's one, it sits nice in the hand unposted. There's a little bit of a lip at the bottom here, which does sometimes dig in if you're using it for a really long note taking session. It posts, but it posts really near the end. And it to me makes this pen seem a little bit too long. But other than that, it's a really, really nice pen. Let me pop this back on. So this is the pen BBS 487 and Diamine Oxford Blue ink. Just going to move this paper up before we look at the pen. So pen number three It's by Narwhal. It's the Narwhal School Curl. So this pattern is Chromis Teal. I do have another School Curl, which is in Popita Navy. The Popita Navy one I bought with a flex nib and I really struggled with it. So what I ended up doing there is I've actually replaced that flex nib with a pen chalet medium nib. So I'm not going to use that for writing with. For our writing sample today, I'm going to use the Chromis Teal, which has got the medium nib that came with it. So it's a Narwhal nib. Yeah, let's take a quick look at that nib. Lovely color, this. Now, one of the things I do like on here is you've got an ink window. So this is a piston filler. And there we can see the ink that's in there. There's not much ink left in here. The ink window isn't that big, so sometimes I do struggle to get an idea for how much ink is in there, but at least I can see I've got enough for writing with. And I would think I might get another day, maybe two out of this pen before I need to put some more ink into it. Talking about ink, the ink that I'm using is by Dymine, and it's called Dymine Marine. So this is a nice, I'm going to say it's a pale blue ink with hints of green. And that's where I think they get the marine from because it does look like some of the photos you see of ocean and, and seascapes. It's a really nice colored ink, nice and bright. One of the things I do like is I like a bright ink, but with lots of saturation and Dymine Marine that hits the nail on the head every time I use it, regardless of the pen I use it in. Just gonna quickly spin around this because I should have done this before we looked at the ink really, but look at the colors on there. You know, you've got a lot of chatoyancy here on the cap. We've got greens, we've got browns, we've got some bit of gold there. I really do like the Narwhal School Kill colors. As I say, I've got the two of them. I've got some other Narwhal pens, but they didn't really make it into the cut at the moment. But we've got here a now wall. Scroll tail. This is a medium nib. It's the first of the medium nibs we've seen today. The ink, diamine, marine. The pen, it cost me 69 Australian dollars. So not overly expensive, not a cheap pen, but I think it's reasonably priced for what it is. It's a nice pen to use. Let's look at our drying times. Immediate. You know, it's a nice wet combination. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. This is another one. We're virtually dry at 30 seconds. I'm just going to leave it for one minute, just for completeness. After a minute, yeah, that's definitely dry, but given what it was at 30 seconds, I would be surprised if it was anything other than dry. Final writing sample, going to move the mic. There's a lot less feedback coming through from this nib. It's a medium nib though, whereas the other two were both fine nibs. 
the ink. As you can see, there is definite shading coming through. So we're seeing more character coming through in the writing because it's got that little bit of difference in the shading of the letters. You know, let's look, we've got the C, top of the T, top of the A, top of the K, first half of the W, you know, the top of the G, all over we've got some shading coming through. It's a really nice pen. It's, as I say, it's smoother, not glassy smooth, but it's definitely smoother, but it's still, it's a stiff nib, it's a steel nib. I'm not expecting lots of flex from it, and I don't get much in the way of line variation, but it's still enjoyable. So this is the Narwhal School Tool. Just going to turn off the page. Got two more pens to go. Get that lined up. I love these Oxford notepads. I love the optic paper. It's a really nice fountain pen friendly paper and I enjoy using it. My next pen, we're jumping up in price now. So we've gone from $69, which was that School Tool. This pen, $270. It's the Pilot Custom Heritage 92, but this has got a gold nib. So we'll take a quick look at that nib. There we go. It's rhodium plated. It's actually one of the things I don't like about this. I mean, yes, the silver color does go with the blackness of the body, but by being rhodium plated, I can't see the fact it's gold and I'd love to see a gold nib. I know I'm being really picky. It doesn't matter. It's just one of those little aesthetic problems I have. This is again a piston filler. It's a demonstrator, here we are. We can see there the piston mechanism. So that's all the way down at the moment. But the mechanism takes up a good two thirds of the body, which means I'm not getting a lot of ink in here on each fill. I get enough to last me about a month usually, but still it's not a lot. The ink that I've put in here, because it's a black pen or a really dark colored pen, it's one of those where I can put any color ink I want into it. So what I've got in there for today, is Robert Oster Tranquility. Yep, we've moved away from the dye minings. I love this ink. This is a gorgeous color. This is, I want to say it's more tending towards a green ink, whereas the marine was more of the blue side of the family. But there's definitely, you can see in here, there's a lot of blue as well. Where it's laid on thicker, you can definitely see the green shades. This was from when I first started trying to do these swatches. And I was actually putting this on using a letter opener. Didn't work very well, did it? It looks really horrible. So I'm happy enough to leave it on here because at the end of the day, it suits what I want. I can see what the color is. I can see how it works. Now, yes, we've got to remember when we put it into a pen and when we see it writing with a nib, the colors will be slightly different. This is just to give me an idea. So this is a really nice, I'm going to say teal, but I'm not very good with the name of it, colors. But I like this color. I really do. It's a gorgeous one. So let's do a bit of writing with this. So here we have a Pilot Custom Heritage. Ninety two with a medium nib. This is a Japanese medium nib. And this was, as I said, two hundred and seventy dollars. The ink. Robert Oster tranquility absolutely love this combo this pen is so nice to write with because it's got that gold nib it's got a little bit of springiness to it when i'm writing we'll test for our dry times so immediate just look at that 10 seconds Doesn't really seem to have changed overly much, does it? 30 seconds. There's a big difference there now, isn't there? Finally, one minute. After a minute, it's still quite wet. So really not a pen to be looking at using for taking a lot of notes, because if you had to wait for over a minute between turning pages, you'd never get anywhere, would you? Let's move the mic for our final writing sample.
that has got so much character in it there's so much shading coming through you can see all the different colors you know and how it changes even in the shaping of a single letter we get all that different color coming through it was my first gold nib well worth it i know 270 dollars that's an awful lot of money especially when you consider it's for a pen but the writing experience that i get from this oh it's just so nice when i got the pen and showed it to my wife the comment that i got was you paid how much because all she could see was essentially this plastic body, which looks similar to some of the Chinese pens that I've got. And they were a fraction of the price. But when you hold it, when you use it, you can see where the quality is coming. And the writing experience is one of the nicest that I've got. There's a little bit of feedback there. Again, you can feel that it's writing, but with the sponginess, you've got that little bit of line variation you can put in just by changing how much pressure you're putting on the nib. So if I just do here, so this is with very light pressure. I'm going to apply a little bit more. Now I'm going to put in a fair bit of pressure on that last one. So you can see that's coming from the same nib. You know, we're going from that really, really fine right the way through to that, I would say, nearly broad line. Lovely pen, really nice. Love the experience. And as I say, it was one of the pens that made it onto this list. It was one. It did go on and off a couple of times. But yeah, I'm glad that I settled and had this on there. So this is the Pilot Custom Heritage 92 with Robert Oster Tranquility. So the final pen. And as I said, we're going up in price. So by default, it's got to be more than $270. At the beginning, we started with the Moonman M800, which I said was modelled on the Leonardo Memento Zero. My final pen is a Leonardo Memento Zero Grande. So a slightly bigger pen. Just going to fetch in that M800 just so you can get an idea for the size. There we go. So you can see it is a slightly bigger pen. You can certainly see how the M800 was, I'm going to say, inspired by this. I don't want to say it's a copy because there are differences. This is the most expensive pen that I own. I paid $377 because I bought it from Europe and had it shipped to Australia. If I'd have bought the same pen in Australia, it would have cost me $479 Aussie dollars. Not a cheap pen. In fact, I would say it's an expensive pen. It's worth every cent. When I was building up this list, this was the first pen that went on the list. It's the only pen that didn't come off the list at one time. I absolutely love this pen. This pen has been inked up since I first got it. I've always had it inked up. I've always used it. I don't go more than a couple of days without using this. It's such a gorgeous pen. Let's take a quick look at the nib. Look at that nib. It's massive. This is a steel nib. So we're not talking even gold nib for this price, but I just love it. I mean, when I hold it in my hand, it's so nice. Let's take a look at the colours on this. Again, this is what they, I believe is a spaghetti pattern. So just going around, look at the different colours. You know, we've got the Leonardo Officiana Italiana there. We've got like a silver shine coming through there. Then we go into these dark blues. We've got some cream, a bit of gold. We've got browns. I just love the pattern on this. It really is so nice. And it feels so nice. It's substantial. Compared to that Moonman M800, which feels plasticky, this doesn't. This feels so nice. So what ink have I got in here? It's a blue pen. I say, if you look around though, we have got other colours in here. So initially, I had some blue inks in here, but a couple of weeks ago, I thought to myself, Gary, let's try something different. In there, I've got Robert Oster Cafe Crema, a gorgeous pale brown colour. And when I look at it with the pen, it's actually not a bad contrast. It looks so nice. It's a nice coloured ink. There's not a lot of character comes through when I'm writing with it, but that doesn't matter because I love the colour. I'm really into brown inks. I've got a lot of really dark ones, but some of the lighter ones where there's more of those yellow tones, I really find that they're, they're really interesting to look at. This, again, is a piston filler. One of the downsides with this pen, there's no ink window, so you don't know how much ink is left in there. So that's one of the things that always worries me. Am I going to be in the middle of a sentence and then, oh no, I'm not writing anymore. So that's the only thing I would say if there was to be an improvement on this, uh, an ink window would be nice. 
but here we are. We've got the Leonardo. Mementos era. Grand. With a medium nib. And as I say, we'll go by what I paid, which was 377 Australian dollars. The ink. Robert Oster. Café Crema. Now, as we can see, this is a medium nib. If I was to restart, the one thing I would do differently, I would get a broad nib rather than a medium. That's not so much a complaint about this because I love it. I love the way it writes. I love the nib. It's more to do with how I've evolved in what I like from pens. And I've evolved to be more of a broad nib person rather than the fine, or even in this case, these finer mediums. But it's still nice. As I say, it's a pen that I'm always wanting to write with. Let's test our drying times. So here goes immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Finally, one minute. After a minute, again, similar to what we were seeing on that pilot, there's still a little bit of wetness coming off there. Our final writing sample, we'll move the mic so you can hear it right. After using the pilot, this feels a bit like writing with a nail. It's definitely nowhere near as spongy. It's a steel nib, so in a way you expect that. I love the, the writing. Let me just pop, move that slightly up so we see the pen there as well as that ink. Although I say there's not a lot of character coming through, there is some. I mean, you can see here on the T, on the Q, the first of the E's there, the A. There's definitely character coming through. Nowhere near as much as I see in that gold nib. But even so, it's there. I love writing with this pen. Of the five, if I was told I could only have one, this is the pen I would take. And I wouldn't even need to think about it. I absolutely love this pen. I love this dark Hawaii pattern. Now, I'm just going to turn it around again, just to show you again. I'm so enamored by it. It's a really nice pen. It's nice and comfy in the hand. With being a little bit longer than the standard Memento Zero model, it does fit so much nicer yes you could post it it does add a little bit of weight to the back there we go let me show you that there it is posted so it posts quite nicely but i don't really see the need for it because unposted it's nice i know it's 377 dollars or 479 if i'd have bought it here it's an awful lot of money it really is but for the pleasure it gives me the enjoyment in the writing it's worth every cent so this is the leonardo memento zero grande with robert oster cafe crema i'm just going to clear this off and then we'll fetch each of the pens in for one final look so here we go, the five pens I would buy if I had to restart. We start with the Moonman M800, and that's got Diamine Monbodo's hat. The Pen BBS 487 with Diamine Oxford Blue. The Narwhal Skullkill with Diamine Marine. The Pilot Custom Heritage 92 with Robert Oster Tranquility. Then finally, the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande with Robert Oster Cafe Crema. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What are the five pens that you would buy again if you are restarting your collection? I'd love to know because it was really, it was quite an interesting experiment when I was doing this. The amount of pens that came on off my list over the week that I was collating it, it was quite amazing and I surprised myself with how much it did actually change. Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation and share those five pens. Please hit the thumbs up button. 
every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.